Energy transfer. When energy goes from one thing to the next, how does it get transferred? That's what we're going to talk about with this. So this is a, not going to go over the animation because I don't think it works anymore with flash. So Earth always kind of wants to get in this dynamic equilibrium. When one area loses something, something else is going to gain it. Okay, and where something gained something, something else had to lost it in order for it to happen. So how does energy move? Energy moves from an area of high concentration, which is known as the source, to an area of low concentration, which is known as the sink, until dynamic equilibrium is reached. So energy flows from high to low. I'm gonna say that a million times this year, and sometimes if you're in school and I say energy flows, you're gonna say from high to low. Energy flows from high to low, from a source to a sink. So you want to transfer heat. This is the heat miser. Now, what heat transfers in this picture? So what they're doing is they see contact. Something's touching something, so it must be conduction. Conduction is when heat energy transfers from molecule to molecule by vibrating the atoms of the molecules and they collide. The most effective is in solids and metals because atoms are closer together. In order to have conduction, you have to have contact. So say that I put this hand on the heater and this hand out the window. If I wanted to have conduction to heat up my cold hand, I would have to touch the two. This would be conduction. Conduction has to have contact. So this is where conduction would happen in an experiment like this. You have a cup full of hot water, you have a cup full of cold water. So then they put this aluminum bar in there. The aluminum bar is going to heat up and it's going to transfer that heat over into the colder cup. The cold part of the bar is going to actually try to transfer its coolness a little bit. Heat usually transfers from one to the other. The cold doesn't. But eventually, what's going to happen to those two temperatures of the cups? They're going to even out with each other. Good. The next form of energy transfer is when things move around like this. You're going to see Miss Baker making a lot of hand motions. Conduction. This one is. Convection. Convection happens from the transfer of heat by movement of fluids and gases and liquids. So gases and liquids are the only thing that convection happens with. And it's caused by differences in densities, okay? Convection currents are circular. See where my hands are going circular? Motion that transfers energy from one place to another. So air currents are the best example. Warm air rises, cold air sinks. Um, Earth's oceans are like this, so the ocean, the air over the ocean does it. In the ocean water, it does it. Um, like I said, in the atmosphere and the asthenosphere. So, this picture shows it all. Uh, warm gas or liquid is less dense, so it's going to rise up until it starts to cool down. Cool air sinks because it is more dense. So cool gases or liquids are going to be at the base. You're going to have your warmer gases or liquids up at the top. And it goes through this vicious cycle. Okay, It's warm and it's rising up until it cools down. And then it becomes more dense and it's going to sink back down. And then it will warm up again and then it's going to get cool. And because it's more dense, it's going to sink back down. This is convection. Conduction. Convection. Oh, this is another picture of it. You can see the Bunsen burner, which is actually touching the, the glass. So there's conduction right there. It's heating up the liquids, but the liquid is starting the convection motion through it. So that's how it's going to be heated up. The last one, radiation. Most radiation comes from the sun or radiators. And I did not mean to push that button. Okay. So heat is transferred by electromagnetic waves. No medium is needed. So it doesn't need anything to travel through. It doesn't need to be touching anything. It doesn't need a gas, doesn't need a liquid, doesn't need a solid, okay? So it can travel through empty space. Sunlight is the best example of this. It goes through the atmosphere. Sunlight through a window, and the higher the temperature, the more electromagnetic energy is given off. So look at this lava lamp. Lava lamps have all three 
things happening with it. So which part of the lava lamp shows convection? Well, you have your differences in densities here because the liquid is being heated up because it's being touched by all this hot liquid here. It'll rise up until it cools down and then it drops back down and goes back into the blob. Conduction, all of these molecules in here are being heated up and they're all touching each other until it gets too warm and then it starts to rise up through convection. And then radiation, you have a light bulb down here which is heating up the uh, blobby stuff. <laughs> and that's where the radiation is, is because it's traveling through the air and warming that up and then it starts to do the convection through the conduction touching down here. Lava lamps are cool. If you go on to YouTube, there's a lava lamp video that will just go for hours and hours. You can sit and watch a lava lamp. I think even there's a 10 hour lava lamp one. I don't suggest watching a lava lamp for 10 hours, but if you wanna go on and watch one for 10 seconds because you've never seen it before, it's not something you paid attention to, they are kind of cool. So what is causing the lava lamp to work? All three of those different things. Okay, good job.